Hello, Pinnacle friends. How are we today? I have a fun new game. We're going to try and test our limits on YouTube and see how many times we can safely say semen before they kick us off. So this is a fun new thing for me. But I have gotten a lot of questions and that sort of stuff and I've noticed a lot of discussions going on the boards on Facebook and whatever um, about shipping and receiving frozen products, semen or embryos. I know a lot of guys cross species, cross the country, are getting ready to um, breed. And honestly, we might not want to admit it, but it probably is one of the more vulnerable areas of our business and what we do. Like you spend all this time and money investing and picking the right things and doing all the stuff. And then you ship your semen and either you don't know how to handle it properly or your tank is lost or something. There is a lot of room for error and mistake there. So just wanted to give you my perspective, which obviously I'm not endorsing any one specific company, manufacturer, whatever. Um, but I have learned a thing or two over the years just about trying to protect yourself through that process. Um, I have had to deliver a lot of unfortunate bad news um, over my time in client service and working with clients that were on the receiving end or shipping end um, of some pretty expensive products. So just wanted to offer some insight, take it or leave it. If you clicked onto this video because I said I was talking about semen and you don't want to talk about livestock products, keep on scrolling. <laughs> So one, like before you even get to the point where you're going to get your semen, give yourself plenty of time, okay? Plenty of time. Do not wait until your seeders are inserted or your sync protocols have started until you are going to go ahead and want to get your semen, okay? Shipper tanks are like a very hot commodity, we'll say, <laughs> amongst either specifically sale companies or a repro company or wherever you're storing your product, okay? It doesn't just take like overnight to get it. Um, it can, it's probably gonna cost you a lot of money and come at some sort of greater risk. So make sure that you're thinking way farther ahead when you order the semen, when you get the semen transferred to your name and when you work on getting that shipped out. Every system is gonna work a little differently. So. Just make sure you're asking questions and kind of figuring that part out before you need it on your property. Um, another consideration, not a lot of folks talk about this up front. It's a lot to handle, but you may want to consider insuring the product, okay? And of course, this is going to just be on your discretion, maybe the cost is not worth the hassle, it's only a couple of units, whatever, whatever. Um, I am here to tell you that if you go back to wherever you bought the semen or ship the semen from or UPS or FedEx, bless their hearts, like, and ask for money because your tank got lost, delayed, damaged, something, um, they're going to probably tell you to go read the fine print and the agreement you signed or UPS or FedEx or whoever will blame it on weather events and you will not get money. So does this happen? Like not a lot, but if you are in that tiny percentage of people that are fortunate enough to experience such a thing, um, it's not good. So there are some options out there, maybe not so much specifically for frozen products. If anybody knows of some, like feel free to let me know and I'll share that out with everybody. Um, most guys just put it on their farm policy. Um, there are some livestock insurance companies out there that would insure it for you. So just a little tidbit to consider because like I said, you're gonna have a lot of money invested, something could go wrong in shipping which leads me to, can you go pick it up? <laughs> so just always keep that in mind. Like I know that's not feasible for a lot of people, but really that's the only way, whether you're talking fresh or frozen product, to know 100% that you're going to receive it and it's not going to get launched across the back of a delivery truck or whatever. So 
All those things considered, make sure you have a tank at home that is charged and ready to receive it. These are shipper tanks. They are not meant to store your product for a long period of time, okay? So those are all of the background things. Um, what are we even talking about when we say shipper tanks, okay? I have my own shipper tank. And I will say if you are either a breeder or a purchaser or whoever that wants to make sure that when you need a shipper tank, you have a shipper tank, buy your own, okay? <laughs> Just go ahead and bite that bullet, write it off on your taxes and get on with it because if you want one and wherever you're getting it from doesn't, you're gonna have to wait. So obviously if you're a big pre-planner, that might not matter. It is very handy to have one too. Like if you're breeding cows at the back chute and your semen tanks, storage tanks are up front, um, having a little tank to just drop what you need in and bring it out to a different pasture or back to another chute or whatever, wherever you're operating um, can be kind of handy. So, Basically, the shipper tanks come in all shapes and sizes, um, especially nowadays. This is the tank itself. This is my baby here. She's empty, so we can handle her like this and do all the things that we want to do. She does not have a name, but she might need one. Um, they will look a little different depending on size, uh, volume, manufacturer, things like that couple different um, packaging on the outside thing so they've tried to make them the containers like unique enough that they can't get destroyed in shipping does not always work necessarily but um so it can look like a mushroom it can be a square it can be a cardboard box it could be all kinds of things um but really the important part is the inside part so basically what a vapor shipper does, and that's what I'm kind of talking about here, there is a core inside of this tank that will absorb the liquid nitrogen and then hold that for whatever the manufacturer says is the period of time. It's all different. Um, really in ideal conditions, it should be a week to two weeks. I mean, I should be a little bit longer actually if you read their website, but that's not accounting for people opening it or it being in warm conditions or sitting on a hard ground or uh, hot ground or whatever. So just so you know what you're getting, okay? So inside you'll have a top, some sort of a lid. They can be shaped all differently. Um, there's a cork kind of stopper there, styrofoam deal, um, keep everything inside. Inside there will be a canister. I probably need to move this a little bit. So there will be a canister of some sort. Again, this is a warm tank so I can take it out and handle it. Um, nitrogen, liquid nitrogen is very cold, obviously. A little bit of perspective on how cold, negative 196 degrees Celsius is what the uh, manufacturer websites that I checked this morning just to verify said. Um, which is negative 385 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're talking cold, okay? If you care about your fingertips or fingerprints, you may want to handle with some gloves, okay? Like a thin coated glove that protects you, but you still have some dexterity. Um, I don't have much left in the way of fingerprints, so I'm not really that worried about it. I can typically do what I need to do super fast and just my fingers are fine and commit a lot of crimes and not get caught because I have no fingertips. Um, I digress. So inside the canister is where your contents are gonna be. Actually, let me back that up a step. Before you even open this bad boy right here, you should have a packing list or sheet of some sort, okay? Most companies are gonna include that with the shipment. It'll be somewhere inside. Sometimes it does get kind of jostled around and it'll fall down on the sides of it. Um, or sometimes it's like taped to the lid or on the side or something like that. Um, if you don't see one, you might wanna ask for one just to make sure that you're verifying that you're getting what you're expecting in this tank, okay? Um, just a little tidbit, especially on the embryo side, you typically will also get um, recovery sheets or instructions on how to thaw and transfer and those sorts of things. So 
if you have any questions on those sorts of things, please ask your, you know, client service person, your rep, whoever you talk to, um, to organize the purchase, the shipment. Um, they should have all of the answers for you. So, any who's all, you take your lid off. Let's back up again, because I'm a squirrel. You should notice some vapor coming out of the shipper, okay? You should also see a frost line inside. If you don't, if like this, Typically this part will be cold and you'll be able to see the frost on it. If for some reason you don't and this looks warm, then you're gonna want to probably contact somebody pretty quick and they can kind of walk you through their protocols on what they recommend, okay? I will tell you what I personally would do in that scenario, but if you're working with a company specifically, you're probably gonna wanna check with them just so that you're doing all of the things the right way okay so if you do think you have a warm tank again i'd probably consider taking some pictures or videos just so that you are covering all of your bases in case it comes down to an insurance type of scenario um just in case the product is still cold i would still consider transferring it pretty quick just to get it out of there um and hopefully salvage it but i mean obviously you can tell like, I don't know if we all see this, but there is no um, vapor of any kind in there. Like, if you dump it out, nothing comes out. It's completely, um, a little rubber stopper guy keeps falling off, um, completely dry and warm. So, that is not ideal, okay? <laughs> Again, you want to open it up and have some vapor come out. Um, safety tip. If you're handling a lot of this stuff, uh, make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area, okay? Liquid nitrogen displaces oxygen, so you're not going to want to have your head right over it and breathing all that in because you will start feeling lightheaded and it's not a good scenario. Um, okay, so we have opened up our tank. We have it positioned right next to the tank that it's going into. Why is this important? Because every time, and I'll talk a little bit more about parts of the tank too, but every time that you are exposing that product to air, even for this the slightest little bit of time, there is some micro thawing that will occur, okay? So if we want the integrity of this product to stay really high, we're going to want to give it the best chance possible, okay? You've already done all the things on the females to get them set up the right way. You're doing the sink, you're doing the nutrition, all of that. Um, we're gonna wanna make sure that this also has the best chance of helping you out. So you have your storage tank, you're ready to go. A lot of times if you have a second person, it's pretty helpful. Um, because then they can work the storage tank, getting that canister ready, and then you can be working in this tank and just really quick do the transfer and drop back down in the cold area, okay? Because that's one thing to remember. Once you start pulling this canister up, okay, you're getting into a warmer area, which you can tell, and I'm sure, like, everybody that really ships semen professionally is going to be like this girl needs to learn her technology. I don't freaking know. I call it the neck of the tank. I'm not sure. I think that's, I've heard people call it that. Um, you're getting increasingly warmer as you go up, okay? So do not hold your canister out like this to see what you're working with, okay? We all have cell phones that have flashlights on them nowadays get your cell phone light out. You should be able to hold it down in or just barely picked up and see what you're looking at, okay? Because again, you should have a piece of paper that tells you what's coming in this tank. Verify that that is correct before you start plucking things out and moving them, okay? If there are any discrepancies, make sure you're noting it as you go so you can go back to whoever um, and get that worked out. So, okay, so we're it's in the safe zone. It's down there in the cold area. Um, what does a cane even look like, right? If you never handled frozen products yourself, you might not know. Um, this is typically what a cane will look like. There are goblets, typically a top and a bottom. Um, if you're only getting a couple of units or one unit or whatever, depending on the size of this and the size of the straw, um, 
If it's a full cane, obviously you're gonna have some on top and bottom. If it's only a couple of units, like I said, not enough to fill the whole thing, typically those will be on the bottom so that they're in, you can feel pretty confident they're in the coldest part of the tank and they're gonna be in the coldest part of your tank too. Um, if you receive semen that maybe does not have the top goblet on and it just is the bottom goblet and you think you're missing some semen, it is possible that it came out during shipping. So most shippers, shipping companies will put a top goblet on just so that it doesn't do that. Um, makes it a little trickier when this is cold, right? Like this is warm. So I would not be able to have this out and about if it was cold, but um, definitely keep that in mind. It will be a little trickier to get out of the bottom, but typically you're gonna pull out of the top first anyway. And then when that one's done, it makes it a little easier. You can slide up the top goblet. So anyway, cane goblets. The top of your um, cane should tell you some indication of what it is, okay? And this is a semen cane. I don't have an empty uh, embryo cane. It will look basically the same, but typically they're a little bit bigger and the goblets will be a little different. Um, and obviously those are going to be longer straws, so it's just going to be one, and then there should be a top cover on it. So on the top of the cane is going to be your identifier. So, um, most studs will have a specific, um, code that identifies a male in their system and or a name. Um, I know this one is on Compass. We have used him on all of our heifers for last year and this year. Um, phenomenal, check him out if you have heifers. And this is sexed, so they actually use a color coding system too, which is really nice. Like all of these are purple. They stick out amongst everything else in our tank. Um, two different size straws also, just to be aware of. There are quarter cc's, which will be fairly skinny, and then a half cc, which are a little bit bigger, so. Most of your small ruminants and sexed um, items and cattle are going to come in the quarter cc's and then conventional units typically will come in the half, but lots of variation. So these are the things to be aware of and ask questions when you're doing it. Um, okay, so we've checked our contents. Our contents are cold. We've used our phone flashlight or other very fancy flashlight that you might have and I don't and we've checked all the contents everything checks out we're ready to move right so this is where it is helpful to have a second person if possible especially if you know you're gonna have to maybe like oh we're putting this in here we're putting this in here sort of thing um again a lot of people have done it a lot and or don't have a lot of fingerprints left on their hands can do it themselves so um, typically I'll kind of eye up, especially if I'm splitting things, like, okay, I wanna grab this and put it in here. So somebody will have pulled up, again, not taking it up into the neck, okay? Even your storage tanks are going to have a difference. They're going to have a neck and a body. Again, that's what I'm calling it, I'm not sure. Somebody fact check me on that. <laughs> but, um, so you don't want, even on your storage stuff, you don't want to pull that all the way up. Like, make sure you can see it and it's where you need to go because if you just drop it in there, you could drop it, okay? I've seen a lot of straws and canes of semen and embryos on bottoms of tanks. That is not ideal. It takes a lot of work to dig that out of there. So, somebody where you already have a technique and you are ready on the receiving end you pull this up you grab it again i'm trying not to let me put this up here i am trying really hard not to pull this up any farther than i have to because this is just falling getting warmer 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 so i typically just for what i can reach i pull it up a little bit i can't find what i'm trying to do because i only have one down in there I grab it with my fingertips and I just go doop, straight into the next thing. Okay, like one doop, swift, swift motion. Sound effects included, okay? You will thank me later. Um, and then again, like a lot of people, I think maybe just because they don't know or because it feels comfortable or something, but a lot of people will then hold this up still. Like as soon as you don't need it, up, uh, drop it back down. Let it get back down into its nice, cold, safe space and environment. 
Um, that's it. I mean, that was a lot of background for just a little bit of movement, but you will thank me. Um, again, these shipper tanks do not stay forever, okay? They only hold the charge in the core for a couple days, whatever, if it's hot. If it sits over the weekend, try to request your shipments to, to ship at a different part of the week and get to you. Um, make sure you're checking it on tracking. If you have a good relationship with your local hub or your driver, like let them know, hey, I'm expecting this, whatever, so they know. Um, if it is something you need super fast, you also could consider having it held for pickup at the hub. Um, I know a lot of times with the fresh product, like if you're doing fresh embryo transfers on cattle um, or fresh semen, I guess, even on some animals, um, that would be definitely a scenario you would want to consider having it held for pickup um, just because they, the people that work, bless their hearts, they keep our country going and all these things moving around. But um, typically third party shipping companies don't really understand how uh, expensive slash valuable slash um, have an expiration date. I don't know how to say that in a different way right now. Um, these products are so if you need it like if you know that you're in a pinch like man I am I didn't realize that I am five units short on whatever I have Majestic sitting here we've used Majestic quite a bit too um, I find you short we're breeding can you ship it overnight to me but I'm gonna have to grab it so that's something to communicate with the company that you're working with because they can then help you get um, that all coordinated so when in doubt, ask questions because it's not quite as easy as just like, oh, I'm going to bring my cows this year and I'm just going to order my semen and ship it and that'll be great. Like, please do some homework and make sure that you know where you need it, when you need it. Uh, make sure that your storage tank that you have is being maintained properly. Um, we have a very fabulous local guy that comes around and just has us on his route and comes and fills and checks our tanks. Uh, we have had tanks go by, or go bad, excuse me. So back to the insurance piece, okay? Consider that. It might not, juice might not be worth a squeeze for you depending on what the cost is of the products um, and that sort of thing. Um, a lot of companies will offer storage options. But again, okay, tanks vats, all the things can go bad. Things can happen. So um, best case scenario is to protect yourself just in case. Um, please also one more tidbit, which we're very blessed with very good breeders, okay? I consider myself a little bit spoiled. Um, I have heard horror stories in the past, like especially with cattle breeders that will like take the straw out of liquid nitrogen and rub it because you can't really read. I mean, it, this is CS Boomer 29F too, just if there's any Hereford people on here, a little throwback for you. Uh, we keep all, like we keep, yeah, that's an embarrassing. We have a couple of those. We keep all of our straws just for safekeeping. Um, I don't know. That's just one of those things. I have literally heard people say like they like took it out and like rubbed off, you know, the uh, like this will be frozen. So there will be some frost on there. Like I rubbed it off and it said it was the wrong thing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, just throw it out because you just killed it. You just killed it. Um, cattle semen is fairly hardy, I guess I would say, like in the spectrum. Um, Pig folks, probably not breeding or handling a lot of this yet. Um, probably with all technologies like this, it'll come. Um, cattle's pretty hardy, but it can get expensive, especially on the sex side. Um, I'd say probably goats would be maybe next, sheep would be after that. Um, there definitely are differences just in genetic materials and how you should handle them and that sort of stuff. So. Just do your homework um, when in doubt, like this is why we build villages and communities of people around us who support us. So if you have any questions or your tank gets there and it's upside down in the back of the truck, like question the contents. Like don't just assume that since it's sitting there, everything is fine. If it seems off or if you're unsure, like reach out and ask those questions because 
if you get to breed day and something happened to this in transit or your tank went bad and you didn't know and then you just put it back down in something cold i mean not everybody will examine the semen before they use it so you're gonna definitely want to know what you're getting yourself into okay time window for success is pretty small on most breeding programs especially if you're trying to stay at a very specific time of year so make sure you're asking those questions um please be nice to the people that you talk to on the phone i can tell you from working in client service for a lot of years and very much caring about my clients and wanting them to be successful it is heartbreaking <laughs> truly to have to deliver bad news or hear bad news and take that in. I mean, most client service reps that I know and I've worked with are A, probably producers of something themselves and B, they are committed to you and your success, whether that's the customer service person or the shipping department. Um, so, you know, try to be nice, try to be nice to your people and they'll work pretty hard for you and trying to get everything solved. Um, but yes, so give yourself time, consider insurance options. Can you drive to pick it up? Is that a possibility? Um, check your paperwork for the contents, verify all of that. Move it very quickly. Make sure you're checking for any issues. Um, do not wipe the straw off and read it and put it back down inside, please, if that's one thing you take away from this. And be nice, that's it. That's all I got. Hopefully that's helpful. I don't know. Again, maybe I'll get some like hateful uh, MVE will call me and tell me that I called the neck and the body the wrong things. Um, that's all we use actually for all of our storage tanks. So hopefully they don't. But if you want to sponsor me, I will. Um, if you guys have any questions, thoughts, if you're like, hey man, I think that there's a lot of discussion going on about this right now. What do you think about that? Like I will try to find people to bring on here. Um, I do have a very good friend of mine who is a very talented veterinarian and amazing human coming on here. I am trying to vet out like a more official platform and a way to record videos when you're not near each other. Um, but I, ha I know I'm spoiled and have a lot of great contacts. That is why you're here, part of it, and that is what I'm going to try to share with you. So be nice, stay positive, stay grateful. Thank you very much for listening. Have a fabulous rest of your day.